All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. We're joined right now by a man who needs no introduction, but nevertheless, we'll get one. And that is our friend Bill Donahue, president of the Catholic League. Good to see you. How are you doing, Steve? I love when you come on. You're right down the street. You come in in person, and, <laughs> and we get to, to schmooze in person. All right, we just had um, Ambassador Francis Rooney on, and um, uh, you know he gave his views on this uh, really, to me, shocking story of, uh, of uh, closing the embassy uh, the, at the Holy See and moving it onto Embassy Row. Uh, what's your take on that? Well, I would agree with everything that Ambassador Rudy said, except that he's too kind. Uh, quite frankly, uh, to, it, you can make a principled argument that we should be concerned about economic issues, we should be concerned about safety issues, but this is not the administration that's going to uh, have any credibility with me when they make those arguments. Uh, since when did they discover austerity? This is the most fiscally reckless administration in American history. To, for them to cite safety concerns after the record in Benghazi, allowing the American facility to get thrashed like that, and to this day we don't get a full account? No. What my biggest concern is is the diminution of the prestige of the Holy See in world politics. Is that what you think is behind this, or what do you think is behind this? Well, look, the, the Obama didn't start in last month. I've written a four-part series for Newsmax on his animus against Catholicism. And I can go through it if you want, but the people can just read about it. Right. There's no question. At best, you, you, you'd have to say this is not a religion-friendly administration. What he just did to Jews uh, with this Iranian deal, I think, also tells us something about that. He's an equal opportunity uh, employer, so to speak. So, no, there's a pedigree here, and it's very disturbing. All right. Um, let's move on. We have a couple of other issues here. And uh, there has been some remarks made by the Pope, uh, which are getting uh, headlines. Uh, and he attacked uh, what, what he called the tyranny tyranny of unfettered capitalism and the idolatry of uh, money. Now, um, I think you'd agree, and you'll point out to me how conservative the Pope has been on, on social issues, and you could go through some of those uh, to make some people out there mad. Uh, but, but when it comes to, uh, to, to, to economic issues, he's, he's far more um, to the left than to the right. Well, the Catholic Church in general has, has takes a step to the left when it comes to socioeconomic issues and a step to the right on sociocultural issues. He made it very clear that we're not going to change our position on abortion. We are not going to change our position on the all-male all priesthood. He said that in the uh, apostolic exhortation. Now, on the notion of the economy, uh, yes, all popes have been opposed to unbridled capitalism, but they also accept a market model. I do think there's an influence of the Latin American philosophy here, much more statist than certainly his predecessors in this area. So do you think that this is... Uh being overplayed by the media, uh, you know, as they would, have, as they have overplayed remarks he had made at, that they interpreted as being uh, lenient towards female priests or towards gays or whatever. Um, do you believe that this is being made too much of? I, I do, and I have a piece which I'm working on now, which I will submit for Newsmax to be up tomorrow that the Pope steps to the left and to the right. Unlike these people, I can be fair. I acknowledge that he has a left bent when it comes to economic issues and a more conservative bent on cultural issues. And what the left does, particularly the Catholic left here, they will cherry pick those statements which makes them put a smile on their face and ignore everything else. They're not gonna talk about abortion or, or, or the fact that women are not going to become priests. He says it very, very clearly in this statement. We're talking to Bill Donahue here, the uh, head of the uh, Catholic League on the Steve Malzberg Show. Okay, um, I don't have HBO, and the main reason I don't have HBO is because of Bill Maher. Um, I, I, will not, I will not pay his salary. I, I don't even want to go to Mets games because he's part owner of the Mets. It's really gotten to that point. And how Major League Baseball let this, this in my view, pig in uh, as a part owner is way beyond me. Um, but he had uh, Dan Savage on, uh, a, a virulent bigot, in my opinion. And here's some of how the conversation went. Uh, they were talking about, well, you, you'll get the drift. Here's cut 12. Now, we think of Hawaii as a kind of a laid-back place, but their Catholic bishop there, I think his name is Bishop Silva, said something about how children who are in gay, uh, you know, adopted by gay parents have a greater chance of committing suicide. That must be bull right? That's total bull He's confusing children with gay parents with children who are raped by Catholic priests. <laughs> I am just done being lectured about children and their safety by Catholic <laughs> bishops, priests, cardinals. The Pope, the Pope himself has let it go. The new Pope, who I kind of dig, has let it go. Love the new Pope. But that All right. 
I mean, go ahead. Well, here's, here's what's happening. Uh, last Friday, I wrote to Richard Plepper, who's not a bad guy. I know Richard. Who is? He's the president of HBO, saying, you got to sit down with Mark. It's gone too far. Uh, Bashir is paying the price for what he said on MSNBC. I like Bald and many other people. Well, Bashir paid no price, really. Well, yeah. he at least he apologized right. to Sarah Palin, right. which is more than you're going to get from these people. Right. What happened last Friday was just unbelievable. And so what I've done now, and I don't do this on a regular basis, believe me, I've only done it once before. I wrote to over 400 bishops in the United States, telling them where they can get a copy online of the 54 vicious anti-Catholic statements that painting the Pope and priests and cardinals as, as child rapists that Barr has said since 1998. He does it every single Friday night. There's no other demographic group in this country that you could get away with this kind of impunity, and enough is enough. I do think that once you get all the cardinals, bishops, writing to Jeff Beeks over at uh, Time Warner and the board of directors at Time Warner, that hopefully they will try to put the reins on this man. It's They don't need to bring back the show. It's, it doesn't. The season is ended. The next show doesn't start up until January. January 17th. Hopefully they'll just cancel the show. You, could, you cannot reform Bill Maher. He's an inveterate bigot. So you're looking for them to let Bill Maher they, go. They're going to just simply dump the whole show. There's no defensible argument. They could not come on your show today and make a principled argument as to why Bill Maher deserves to get a pass when other people, when they say untoward comments, which are not even half as bad as what he does in a relentless, obscene way every single week, they couldn't make that argument. Now, the, Bill Maher, the time has come to let this guy go. And and your take on Dan Savage? Well, Dan Savage would be probably the number two anti-Catholic bigot in, in popular culture, so that the fact that they picked him to take this stab again, I mean, you know, most people love the Pope. To paint him again as a child rapist is something that only Bill Maher would do, and only HBO Time Warner seems to tolerate. Yeah. All right. Well, listen. Uh, I, you know, uh, good luck with your effort. I mean, I'm, I don't like to call for people to be fired, uh, but I, I, all I could tell you is I, I will not pay any, not a penny to his salary. This is not my natural step. When you have 54 vile comments uh, over all these years, something's got to be done. My friend, happy Thanksgiving. And Thank you. Merry happy Christmas. If I don't see happy you. Hanukkah. then. Thank you very much. Yeah, same day. Thanksgiving right, right. and Hanukkah. That's never going to happen again in our <laughs> lifetime. Anyway, all right, folks, we're coming back. Alan Dershowitz will join us. He will weigh in on the U.S. Supreme Court decision today to listen to the uh, Hobby Lobby case involving Obamacare and freedom of religion. And he'll weigh in on the Iran deal alluded to by our friend Bill Donahue. All that uh, straight ahead right here on the Steve Malsberg Show, Newsmax TV, and Radio.